Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching all around the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood. With me now, we have uh, the Assyrian Encyclopedia himself, Sam Shamoon, and we have Muslim apologist Etisham Gulam from uh, Answering Christians One. Uh, their YouTube channels are in the description box. Yes, sir. All right. I... Go ahead. What? They can hear you. Who was that? No, Who was I thought... that? I just muted it. Sorry, man. Okay. Don't, don't no, you're good. You're good. Me. You're good. Guys, again, I've never... I've, I've, it's a very rare live stream that doesn't have some sort of technical difficulties. It's usually it's usually me doing it. It's usually. Um, all right. Well, uh, those of you who are here yesterday, you saw that we um, we had a conversation for a while. Etesham opened up by giving a presentation on some of the reasons he's persuaded that Muhammad is a prophet. And then we had a discussion of a portion of those reasons. And let me see where I got the, I actually had the list from yesterday here. So we ended up talking about uh, a lot about the, um, the claim that the Quran says that the Bible's been corrupted, and uh, we talked about Jeremiah 8.8, 8, and then we didn't get into uh, some of Etesham's opening arguments uh, about the biblical criteria of a prophet and how Muhammad fulfills them, uh, specifically the criterion of um, performing miracles and of fulfilled prophecies. Um, then... Uh, Etesham also gave a couple of examples. He can he he's he uh, he'll be able to recap those here in a second. And uh, Etesham mentioned he didn't go into detail uh, the scientific accuracy of the Quran and uh, something very interesting moral pro moral problems with Muhammad and are Christians uh, can Christians be consistent when we criticize Muhammad for various things he did when we look at the Bible and we see prophets doing all kinds of things as well. And Etesham argued that he believes that Muhammad was sincere. That's interesting. He's not going to get any argument. He's not going to get any argument out of me on, on that point because I actually believe that Muhammad did sincerely believe that he was a prophet. And he mentioned that uh, Muhammad didn't plagiarize sources. So uh, Etesham, if you can... Uh, uh, you can basically pick which one which one of these you want to you want to start off with and you can kind of recap your point on that uh so if you want to give some, you know want to expand upon your point or give some examples of one of these points or something like that and then we can kind of uh, focus on that but before before we get started just for anyone who wasn't watching um who wasn't watching last night uh, if you guys each want to introduce yourselves for viewers so sam why don't you tell people uh, once again who you are what you do well, I'm a um, Christian apologist who's been doing ministry <clears throat> with Islam and anti-Trinitarian cults since 1999. That's what I've been doing. So most people know right for answering Islam, have a blog, and I do my YouTube channel, Yishamunian. So that's about it. That's all I do. And, um, yeah, Sam, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people have noticed, re regardless of their background, that you seem to have a, a computer-like memory. And uh, for those of you yesterday who were saying, wow, I want Sam's brain, ladies and gentlemen, trust me, you don't. The people who have abnormal memory abilities sure. in one area, their brains usually do not work as well in other areas, right? And so you, 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 right. you, if you had Sam Shamoon's brain, you would get the benefits of the brain, but there you'd also get the, the costs as well. And, uh, and, yeah. and trust me, it's, it's not worth it. <laughs> All right, Etesham, why don't you go ahead and, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for everyone? Oh, uh, hi, my name's or assalamu alaikum and hello to any non-Muslims. Uh, my name is Etesham Kulam. Uh, I've been a Muslim apologist for over 10 years now. Uh, I got my bachelor. I got my bachelor of arts from Wayne State University uh, a few years ago. Uh, I work at a hospital, Novi Ascension Hospital. Uh, you know, and uh, I make YouTube videos. The link uh, for my channel should be in the description below. I have a website too, so if you go to my channel, my website should be on the uh, it should be on the top uh, section there. And um, yeah, I mean uh, that's uh, pretty much all I can. Uh, I can think of. Oh yeah, I've done I've done interviews with uh, various scholars like Dr. Richard Carrier and uh, Robert M. Price and stuff like that. So I make uh, I have interview videos uh, regarding the origins of the Bible and uh, and stuff like that. So people who want to uh, know the Bible from like uh, these atheist scholars, they can go on my channel 
and uh, things like that. I like uh, researching uh, the Bible and the Quran and Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. That's one of my hobbies, I guess. And I'm a DC guy, mm-hmm. as you can see in my shirt. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, uh, I noticed that. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got a Spider Man shirt. Sam has a General Marvel shirt, and uh, Ethishim right. has a DC. So we got a sort of Mar- Marvel versus DC today Marvel going on. <laughs> And by the way, you know what we need to say there? Yeah, well, say this. Well, well, by the way, I hear background noise. Like, I think it's probably a Tisham. I can hear me. But what I'm saying is, you got to give a Tisham credit. He's one of the few Muslims who's willing to come here and prove what he believes because he has confidence. His religion is the truth, and Muhammad is a messenger. So you got to respect that mm-hmm. because he's here doing that. So we give you respect for that, that you're willing to at least engage and demonstrate why you believe Islam is true. So for that, we should give him kudos and respect him for that, mm-hmm. and thank you for joining us. Yes, yeah, no uh, problem. I mean, uh, oh, I'm sorry, can I? Can I, I say something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no problem. I mean, I like talking religion with you two as opposed to James White and stuff like that. I've had problems with them, so I've just, I've just, you know, I, I, I ignore him or I make fun of him on my channel. But you two, you're, you're fine. So uh, as long as we keep it respectful, I think we should be good. Yeah, I think, All the time, I think we'll be fine here. And uh, I noticed a lot of people in the chat, before we get started, a lot of people in the chat are mentioning that uh, Hatun Tash was attacked yes, today. Uh, but yeah, everyone, I'll I'll, uh, I'll check with Hatun, and if she wants to come and discuss something, then... Uh, then, yeah. then, yeah, but uh, we all have to look into that. So, yeah, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not talking about that here on on this program. But I understand it just happened, and so people are, are asking about it. But yeah, I would have to, I would want to uh, uh, check the details on that first. All right, Etishem. So, which, uh, which, which argument would you like to look at first now? And feel free to uh, feel free to go into it. All right. So, I don't. Um, I, you know what? You had a better list than than I okay. had. Can you just speak, can you just repeat the yeah, thing? Yeah, pro- pro- the- probably probably yeah. a probably a good place to start would be the uh, biblical criteria of a prophet. So you mentioned the oh, biblical. You want to do that? Hmm? You want to do that? Or yeah, you want? Fine. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever you want. Anything you want. You, you mentioned you could you could, you could go through anything you want. So you could we could talk about about the biblical criteria criteria of a prophet. Yeah, that's and what you, you want to you, do. You, you mentioned some examples of. Uh, Muhammad uh, saying things that came true, that, or that uh, prophecies that were fulfilled, um, and you mentioned Muhammad performing miracles, and you mentioned that these were fulfillments of biblical prophecies, and uh, you mentioned scientific accuracy of the Quran, and uh, you mentioned how uh, moral objections to to Muhammad are problematic when com- when coming from Christians because we have biblical prophets doing. Uh, doing things that we would regard as immoral, uh, as as immoral, and so uh, a- any one of those points you wanna you wanna go into. Yeah. All right, so let's start with uh, let's start with the criteria, the the proofs for prophecy and miracles and stuff like that. Because when it comes to moral issues, I gotta look up the references in my Bible, so that's gonna take uh, that's gonna take a little bit. Uh, I should have done that earlier, my bad. So I, I, yeah. I, I, actually, at this I have I have to point out. You have the Assyrian Encyclopedia right here. Um, if you if you if you're if you're if you're thinking of if you're thinking of something and you're not sure the reference, you can just say, "Sam, what's a reference on this?" And he'll give it to you that. Yeah, That's how I do it. Yeah. It's actually yeah, it's, yeah, it's actually yeah. easier for me when I'm uh, when I'm you know if I'm working on an article or something, and I need some references. It's actually easier for me to say, "Sam, give me all the references on this," than for me to actually look them up because he just he just uh, he's, he spouts them all out. So yeah, if you need any references on on any of that stuff. Yeah. Let's see. He, he's uh he'll he'll he could give you, he could give them all to you. It's uh, it's quicker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, right. you give me too much credit, but glory to Jesus Christ. Everything good's from him. We trust the spirit. But go ahead, brother. In humanity. All, go right. Ahead. all right. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'm just gonna look up my Bible because you know I, I think that's just I think I'll, I'm just comfortable doing that. Okay. All right. So uh, all right. So before we before we begin, uh, you know, some people have been coming on my channel saying you know. Uh, about the debate format and stuff like that. So if I can just give my two cents on the format, because last time the format was problematic, I don't want problems this time. So, uh, you know, I want to have a friendly discussion, like an academic discussion. I don't want Sam Shamoon's rapid crossfire or uh, whatever. That's the thing that happened with uh, George Syag uh, when he set up that that thing with uh, James White. So that was a problematic thing for me. So I don't want that again. So what I think we should do is I should go and then Sam Shavun should go, so there should be no questions back and forth. Does that sound like a fair? Whatever you want format? to do, yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Do what you want. Fine. Okay. 
All right. So, da, 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 da. all right. So, another thing I want to say is, uh, is it possible we can keep this shorter than two hours? Absolutely. Like an hour, an hour. Yeah. We, 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 uh, yeah, we can, we, yeah, we can definitely go. Um, yeah, you let us know when you want to, you want to wrap it up. Let us know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We because last, we could probably do an hour and a half and uh, things like that because I have to go to my parents' house. No problem. Sure. So like an hour and a half or two hours is that is that fine? Yeah, well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, it's it's I don't I don't know where you guys are. It's uh it's eight thirteen p.m. here on the East Coast, so we can we can uh we can be off by well let's call it nine thirty just to be just to be safe and then all right that gives okay. us an hour an hour and fifteen minutes from now. Hour fifteen minutes from now. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just you know my That's mom fine. takes off. That's right. Um, all right. So all right. So another thing I want to say is this is going to be my last night on. I want to give other Muslim apologists a uh, chance to come in and talk to you guys. So I don't want to hog the spotlight. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna contact Sami Zadri and Shabir Ali. Hopefully, you can get Shabir Ali. On here. Sure. Hopefully, he can come on. Yeah. Tell tell yeah. Shabir. Yeah. Sam wants you to come on. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So the biblical criteria. So you know what? Let me just recap really quickly because last time we had some technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. So can I just recap the things that were missed, or you just want me to jump into the uh, to the issues? Um, yeah, well, I mean, we're we're we're, we're you, you're going to have an uh, opportunity to recap each one of them. We'll just kind of do it separately, so we can so we can focus on on one at a time. So you can uh, anything on the biblical criteria of a prophet here. So Muhammad's miracles. Um, fulfilled prophecies, anything you want to bring up, and then we'll get a response from Sam, and then you can respond to his response, and we'll, we'll get a, we'll get a few, uh, you know, responses in, and then after that, and then we can move on to another point. All right, so, all right, so I'm just going to repeat the biblical criteria real quick for people, and then we can just get to it. So, basically, what is the biblical criteria for a prophet? Now, you might be saying, why am I bringing this up when I believe that Islam teaches the corruption of the Bible because I'm talking to a Christian audience, so we got to judge Muhammad by the criteria of the Bible. So the first thing is he must command the people to worship the God they know, Deuteronomy 13 and 18. The prophet Muhammad did that. He said, worship one God. So that's the first thing. The second thing is give a true prophecy of a future event or a miracle, Deuteronomy 13, 18. Prophet Muhammad did that. Not claim to be the Messiah, Jesus, or uh, Elijah, the Gospel of John, Chapter 1. I know Sam gave a uh, response and uh, things like that. We didn't have time to go over last time. Maybe we can get into it. Uh, maybe I can respond now. So uh, so then what about the moral character? I'll, I'll just get into that real quick. We know that Aaron built the golden calf in the Old Testament. And I'm sure Sam Shemul knows the exact reference. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that David committed adul adultery, according to the Old Testament. We know that Noah, after the flood, got intoxicated. So what is your standard for accepting or denying a prophet? Now, you might say, well, he's got to say the, the name Yahweh or the Tetrametrogram. The problem is Jews don't even say that name. Uh, today, Yahweh today, uh, Yahweh is not even in the New Testament. It's replaced by the Greek word kurios. Uh, not even, so not even the Greek New Testament manuscripts say Yahweh or the Tetrametrogram. It says kurios. So, uh, so Christianity fails that same exact test. Uh, the New Testament does not say that word, as simple as that. So the New Testament will not be invalid given the test of the, the Yahweh or the Tetrametric Ground. So um, that's just my uh, brief recap. If you want me to recap something else, I can, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so so we, have, uh, we have kind of, um, let's see. So Muhammad... Looks like your points, and, and I'm sort of you know appealing to the points from today and yesterday, that your points were that Muhammad, uh, he preached the one God as a true prophet should. Uh, Muhammad performed miracles as a prophet should, and Muhammad had fulfilled <clears throat> prophecies as a prophet should. And as far as arguments that would be used against him, specifically moral problems, these same kind of moral problems could be pointed out with uh, with Noah and with you know David and with others. So is that is, is that a basically a summary of your, your main points there? Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right, Sam. What Sam? What do you think? Yeah. Well, what does he? Is there any one of those you want me to address first? Because I know. Uh, it just, me let, let me ask it to Sham. It to Sham. Yeah. Yeah. Would you yeah. Would you prefer going through sort of one of these four issues you Which just one, brought yeah. up at a time, or Sam just respond to all of them at once? What do you want me to do? It's up to him. It's up to him. It okay. doesn't matter. To me. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind. I up can to you, go Sam. Up to you. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
Yeah, because I don't want to just overwhelm with too many references. So you said, first of all, you're talking about a prophet has to preach uh, the the true God, and Muhammad did that. And then you talked about a prophet has to have a prophecy that comes to pass. Now, that's partially correct, <clears throat> because even Deuteronomy 13, which you appealed to yesterday, Deuteronomy 13, let's just take that one at a time. By the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting the Spirit to fill me, to speak clearly for the glory of Jesus. Now, the Lord Jesus as well as Moses state that even if a prophet prophesied something to come to pass, that's still not proof he's a true prophet. Here it is. Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 to 5. <clears throat> if a prophet or one who foretells by dreams, notice Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 to 5, because you mentioned that even yesterday. If a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you a sign or wonder, and if the sign or wonder spoken of takes place, and the prophet says, let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them. You must not listen to the words of the prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart, with all your soul. It is the Lord your God you must follow, and him you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him, serve him, and hold fast to him. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death for inciting rebellion against the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. The prophet or dreamer tried to turn you from the way the Lord your God commanded you to follow. You must purge the evil from among you. Now, Jesus confirms this, Matthew 24, verses 23 to 25. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe. This is Matthew 24, verses 23 to 25. I'm not trying to speak too fast, but fast enough we get the point and not belabor it. By the grace of Jesus Christ. Now notice what he says in verse 24. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you ahead of time. So both the Old Testament and New Testament state, it is insufficient. It's not sufficient enough. Just because a prophet announces the future and comes to pass or does a miracle, that in its in of itself is not conclusive, irrefutable proof that he's a true prophet from the true God. So the criterion that's really important, you mentioned it. He must proclaim the same true God. So I'm going to repeat what I mentioned yesterday. Since you're appealing to Deuteronomy, and since you're appealing it because we believe it, that means we are to judge by it. That same book of Deuteronomy specifically states, and I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 14, verse 1, where it says the Israelites are the sons and daughters of the living God. That's Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. Deuteronomy 32, verse 6. Deuteronomy 32, six, verse 6, it says that Yahweh begot Israel as his sons. And that's repeated in Deuteronomy 32, verses 18 to 20, where God is chastening the Israelites, saying that they pretty much ignored and abandoned the rock who gave them birth, the rock who spiritually begot them, the rock who spiritually birthed them, the rock who spiritually <clears throat> fathered them, because God is not a physical being, he doesn't have sex. Now in Exodus 4.22, we're also told that Israel is God's firstborn. He says that, he tells Moses to tell Pharaoh, Israel is my firstborn son, let my son go that he may worship me, and if you do not let my son go, I will kill your firstborn. So right away, the God of the Old Testament is a spiritual father to his covenant people. They are his spiritual children that he spiritually birthed Spiritually father, not sexually. Chapter 5, verse 18 of the Quran. Chapter 5, verse 18 of the Quran. Chapter 19, verses 80 to 93 state, Neither the Jews nor the Christians are the sons of Allah nor his beloved. They are just simply creatures. And the highest relationship you can have with Allah is a slave to master relationship. So it's not the same conception of God. Just add a couple more points because we'll stay on the conception of God before we move to other things. The same Pentateuch that you're referring to speaks of the messenger of the Lord, the messenger of God. There is a specific figure who's sent by God, who claims to be God, who is worshipped as God, and does things that only God can do. For instance, in Genesis 31, verses 10 to 13, Genesis 31, verses 10 to 13, Jacob has a dream in which he sees the angel of God coming to his aid to save him from the oppression of his father, Lebanon. And the angel of the Lord says, and Jacob says, it's the angel of God. And the angel of the Lord says to Jacob, I have seen all that Lebanon has done to you, for I am the God of the house of God, Beth El, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. So the angel calls himself the God of the house of God. It's like an angel saying, I'm the God of the Kaaba. And yet Jacob knows this is the angel, and yet knows that this is no mere creature. 
He's a messenger sent from God who's also God. Therefore, the Pentateuch opens up the door for God existing as a plurality of persons. To add another one, Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and when the earth was without form and void, the Spirit of God hovered over the watery deep. And elsewhere we're told in Job 33, verse 4, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. So just to recap this point so we can talk about it. The Pentateuch that you re refer to says God is a spiritual father. Israel is a spiritual son. The angel of the Lord is distinct from God but happens to be God, is worshipped as God, and does things only God can do. Thirdly, the Spirit of God is creator. He was there <clears throat> overseeing the formation of the earth, making earth habitable, making life possible, to exist on earth and then we're told the spirit of god has made me so god the angel and the spirit these three are identified as being fully divine doing things that only god can do so did muhammad believe that did muhammad believe allah is a father to the muslims spiritually not physically did he believe that the angel of the lord is god distinct from god can only do what god does and do you believe that the spirit of allah ruh allah is creator and life giver if not then it's not the same god so what do you say about that All right, so you brought up a lot of points. Um, uh, all right, so David, la David, last time you did a good job in moderating. Mm -hmm. So this time, um, you know, if I'm going too far or something like that, I'd make a signal saying, you know, stop. You're so fine. if I'm rambling on too much, uh, you know, just stop me whenever. So uh, first of all, you're you're begging the question that uh, that the Bible is correct when it's talking about these things. So if you're appealing to the Bible. Uh, if you're appealing to biblical verses, uh, you know, those biblical verses can be applied right back at Paul because you believe Paul is a true disciple, to, true pro or he was a prophesizing prophet according to 1 Corinthians and uh, things like that. I know, I know Paul is an apostle and things like that, but it's possible that Paul's the false apostle because Paul performed miracles and acts of the apostles uh, too. So are you going to point the finger back at Paul? Now, I personally don't think Acts of the Apostles is historically accurate, according to, you know, conservative scholars and things like, according to their conclusions as well. So, you know, this argument can be thrown back at uh, Paul. So, and then you said, did Muhammad believe in, as God the Father? Uh, well, the Prophet Muhammad, <laughs> Prophet Muhammad doesn't need to. He's t he told the Jews and Christians that, you know, it's the same God. He said that, uh, you know, Allah or God is... The God he's preaching is the same as the Jews and and, uh, and as the Christians. So just because Islam says some different things about God doesn't mean it's a different God. He's preaching the same uh, uh, God. Uh, and you didn't talk about uh, the fact uh, the fact that it doesn't matter if he uh, it doesn't matter about Yahweh because uh, I, like I said about Yahweh and I'll repeat it that Jews don't even say Yahweh's name. Right, the Greek New Testament doesn't say Yahweh; it says Kurios. It's replaced by the Greek word Kurios. So the New Testament fails that same exact um, uh, test. So I think Prophet Muhammad did pass the biblical test because he did do prophecies and he did do uh, miracles. The only thing you have against Muhammad the Prophet, though, I think the only thing you have against the Prophet in this case. I honestly think it's a satanic versus, but if you want to talk about how the satanic versus is false, we can uh, we can get into it. So Prophet Muhammad doesn't need to go into specifics. He just gave the uh, uh, the simplistic answers uh, and keep Arkham's razor in mind here. So that that would be my two cents. Can I respond now, Dave? Uh, uh, what, what, one second. I just wanted to respond to sort of a little side issue here. Uh, Colleen keeps posting um, some some uh, claims saying we shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be having this discussion because of the Bible. But she says, Colleen says, I know God exhorts us, do not enter into theological debates. So biblically speaking, this entire format is not scripturally founded. Sorry. And then uh, she also says, Titus 3.9, do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. Uh, first of all, well, I, I would I would point out three things very quickly, uh, Colleen. One, Paul is talking about certain kinds of disputes, which are which are w not what we're doing right here. Uh, two, what we're doing right here, this does occur in the Bible, right? When it says that Apollos vigorously refuted his opponents in public debate by by proving that Jesus is the Christ, 
that's what's going on here. When Paul was having discuss, public discussions with the Stoic and Epicurean philosophers, that's that's what we're doing, right? If if you if two people disagree on something, it's a good idea to have a discussion or a debate. So you do find that thing. You you do find that sort of thing in the Bible. Um, so so those are two things. And then the third thing would be. Look how hypocritical you are, right? You're telling us, guys, you have the wrong position. Therefore, I'm going to refute you and show you that you're wrong and that you should adopt my position. That's exactly what, that's what we're doing, right? We're, 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 we're stating what positions we disagree on, trying to get to the truth about them. You're saying, you can't do that sort of thing. Let me tell you how you guys are wrong and how you should adopt my position of not having this discussion. But notice, what are you doing? You're trying to have a debate on whether we should be debating and whether debating yeah, yeah. is okay. Stop being a hypocrite. But, you know, yeah. this is a silly position. If you don't like this, Colleen, go, go somewhere else. All right. Yeah. Now that we uh, dealt with yeah, that. Let me, let me say, guys, please stop with the nonsense in the chat because when you do that, we have to correct you. That's robbing time yeah. because Itisham doesn't have much time. Mm -hmm. Stop robbing the time. Leave us be. Leave time us robbers. Alone. Don't like it? Get out of here then because I don't want I the time to pass us by now. Uh, let's do a debate, DC versus Marvel. Let's do that. Yeah, that would be great. And Batman wins. But let me come back <laughs> to some of the things you said. Now, the things you said, uh, Itisham, uh, maybe you forgot. You appealed to Deuteronomy 18, and you said, because you're Christians, I'm appealing to the Bible to show you that Muhammad passes the biblical criteria. You can't then, in the next breath, say, well, you assume the Bible is right in order to then <clears throat> reject the very Bible that you appeal to to convince us that Muhammad is a prophet. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you're going to appeal to the Bible to show that Muhammad passes the test to convince us, then we are within our rights to use the same Bible to show that Muhammad fails the test and that he's a false prophet. That's the first point. You appeal to the Bible, and I'm appealing to the Bible show, no, he doesn't pass that criteria that you appeal to. But secondly, we can talk about Paul, and I guarantee you Paul will pass with flying colors, both from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and even the Quran. But I'm not going to change the topic to Paul, because Paul did not contradict anything in the Old Testament. Paul did not say God is not a father to his people. Paul did not say that the Holy Spirit is not divine and co-creator. Paul did not reject the deity of the angel of the Lord, all of which Muhammad did. So that's a second point. Third point, let's focus. You said Muhammad claimed that he did preach and worship the same God that the Jews and Christians believed in. He can make that claim all day, all night. Mormons make the same claim. Mormons tell Christians and Jews, we worship the God of the Old Testament, but when you press the Mormon to them, God the Father was a man who became God, who has a physical body, he has sex, he sires children sexually, and two of his children are Jesus and Lucifer, who are brothers. They can claim that they worship the God of the Bible all day, all night, but their view of God shows they're not worshiping the God of the Bible. So Muhammad can claim all day, all night that he's worshiping the God of the Bible, but he contradicts, number one again, that God is a father to his people. The Quran says Allah is a father to no one. Well, right there, he can't be the God of Moses, because let me repeat what Moses said. Deuteronomy 14, verse 1, to the Israelites, you are the sons and daughters of the living God. What did Moses say? Deuteronomy 32, 6, Jehovah who begot you, who produced you. What did he say in Deuteronomy 32, 8? The God who gave you birth the rock who beget you, which directly flies in the face of lam yelet wa lam yulad, because Moses' is God does beget spiritually, not physically, not sexually. He doesn't have a wife that he has sex with to sire children. So no, it's not the same God. And then let's go back to what I said. The angel of the Lord, because the word malach in Hebrew, which we translate angel, doesn't mean a creature necessarily. It means a messenger sent with a message from God. This messenger calls himself God claims to do what only God can do. He is worshipped as God by those who see him, and they recognize that this is God sent by God. And then the Spirit of God, Ruach Elohim, Genesis 1 verse 2, is there overseeing the superintendence of the earth, making it habitable. And to confirm it, Job 33 verse 4 plainly states that the Spirit of God has made me. The Spirit of God has made me. That's the Jewish Bible. And the breath of the Almighty gives me life. So the Old Testament agrees with the New Testament on these areas. New Testament agrees with the Old Testament, but contradicts the Quran. And then finally, why would I need to refute your argument about Yahweh? That's not my argument. So please, Itisham, don't attack straw men. Just because some other Christians say Muhammad didn't use the name Yahweh, deal with them. Go to them and bring this up. That's, what, what, Sam, that's what Samuel Green would bring up. I'm not Samuel Green. I'm Sam Shamoon, right? It's like uh, me attacking Bassam's arguments that you didn't make. 
Yeah, but you see, at the Sham, this wrong part, and hey, but I'm not Basam Zawadi. When you bring Basam Zawadi, then refute him. Deal with what I said. I don't use oh. that as a limit. So, okay. so nothing you've said addresses what I've said, but hopefully now you can address this point unless you want to go to another area. All right, uh, I took notes. Uh, hang on. All right, so why? So then, why am I appealing to the? Uh, why am I appealing to the Bible? You might be asking. Well, at, like I said yesterday, last night, uh, I'm talking to a Christian audience. I'm, I'm guessing like 99% of the people watching are Christians. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, so then, what would convince Christians of the prophethood of Muhammad? I'm using the Christian standard to convince the Christians that Muhammad is a prophet because he did do miracles, he did do prophecies. Uh, you know, and then. Uh, so yeah, that that's why I'm using the Old Testament and things like that because Christians believe that's inspired. We Muslims don't believe it. Christians believe it. So because I'm trying to convince a Christian audience. Now if I was if I was talking to an atheist audience, if you two became atheists, then I wouldn't even bring up the Bible. So I'm using the Bible to uh, to convince the Christians that yes, Muhammad fits the criteria of a prophet according to your own scriptures. So I'm not. Uh, I'm not being inconsistent there, or I'm not just using some random argument there. You said Paul didn't uh, did not uh, contradict the uh, Old Testament. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just hilarious. Paul contradicts the Old Testament in every possible way. Paul says uh, Paul says things that could deify uh, deify Christ. Although there are verses in Paul, like uh, one Corinthians chapter eight verse six, where Paul says uh, uh, God and uh, God and Lord uh, God and Lord are different things. So, uh, but I know they're like Philippians 2 and things like that. So Paul says things that are different, that says things that could be different from the Old Testament. Paul says that, uh, talks about a dying and rising Messiah. He talks about in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 about, uh, you know, Jesus' death being uh, prophesied in the Old Testament and uh, things like that. But when you go to the Old Testament, it doesn't talk about any dying Messiah or any uh, uh, crucified Messiah or any resurrected uh, Messiah or uh, things like that. And even William Lane Craig, right? I've, I've read William Lane Craig uh, over the years, and even he says that Jesus', Jesus prophecy, prophecies of Jesus uh, dying and rising are not found, are not clearly found in the Old Testament. So Paul contradicts the Old Testament way worse than Mama does. Uh, uh, you know, so, uh, so that's why I'm uh, bringing that up and uh, to show con uh, consistent standards. Because keep in mind, Shemuel, you're a Christian. So any argument you throw back against Islam, it could be thrown back again. It can be thrown back more forcibly uh, on the Bible. Uh, so yeah, that's that's just my uh, two cents there. All right. Okay. Now, can I respond? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how can an argument from the Bible be thrown against the Bible when you're presupposing the Bible. See, this is the circular reasoning on your part. And again, and probably I wasn't clear the first time. The very fact you want to convince Christians he passes the biblical criteria means that and we can use that same Bible to show he miserably fails and he's a false prophet. So you're stuck with it. You want to use the biblical criteria? I show you he fails miserably. I know you're trying very hard to go off topic on Paul. I'll be more than happy to sit with you and show you from the Old Testament, New Testament, and Quran. Paul passes, but Muhammad fails the test of the Old Testament, New Testament, and he fails the Quran. But since you want to talk about Paul contradicting the Old Testament, and I'm tempted to refute every one of your points, but no, we're staying on topic. Because I know some Muslims like to do this, and I'm not going to accuse you. When it gets too hot, they can't defend their prophet. They go on the attack and bring up irrelevant issues, red herrings. But I'm not going to bite. I'm going to stick on the topic. Is Muhammad a true prophet? Now let me use your own argument against Paul to show that you just condemned Muhammad as a false prophet. You said he contradicts the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 of 4. Deuteronomy 24. I'm just going to give you a few where Muhammad fails the test miserably, showing that if Muhammad was around at the time of Moses, he'd be killed, he'd be stoned as a false prophet. Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 of 4. There it states that when a man divorces a woman and she marries someone else, and the second husband divorces her or dies, she cannot go back to her first husband because that would be an abomination, something detestable to the God of Moses. Lo and behold, your prophet was supposed to be like Moses. In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 230. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 230 says, When a man irrevocably divorces a woman, he cannot take her back until she marries another, and according to Hadith, the man has to taste her sweetness, her honey, meaning he has sex with her, right actual sex and when he divorces her she can return to her husband and the man who makes her lawful is known as muhallil so 
Itisham, Deuteronomy condemns your prophet as being detestable and abomination, disgusting to the God of Moses. Because let me repeat, Itisham, you want to use the criteria to convince Christians? Christians are not convinced. Muhammad fails miserably. Let me repeat again, Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 of 4. It says, if a man divorces a woman, and that woman marries another, she cannot go back to her first husband if the second divorces her or dies. But your God, who you say is the God of Moses, says, if a man divorces a woman irrev irrevocably, she can only go back when she marries someone else who then tastes her honey sweetness and then divorces her. And that's why it's called Muhallal, the one who makes her halal, lawful. So the God of Moses says, Muhammad, you are despicable, you are detestable, you're an abomination. And if you're living at the time of the theocracy of Moses, you would have been stoned and killed as a false prophet. So you can't have your cake and eat it too. I know you don't believe the Bible, that's fine. But you're appealing to us, saying, here's your criteria. And I'm saying, sorry, that criteria goes right back at you and condemns Muhammad as a false prophet. So that test, he fails. So if you want to move on to something else, we can. But go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, just real quick, um, it's not a red herring to bring up Paul because, uh, you know, Paul needs to be evaluated, uh, too. Uh, so who knows? Maybe, maybe this, you know, maybe this false prophet, maybe this false prophet criteria is maybe when Jesus said, talks about false prophets in the Gospel of Matthew, that appeals to Paul or things like that. But I know we're not Here, talking about that. Let great. me just real chime yeah. in. Why don't we set up something this week after the Muhammad week and maybe Dave can do it. We come back and talk pa about Paul. Paul, is he a true apostle or is he like Muhammad, a false prophet? We can do you that. You know what? Let, let, let's do crucifixion and resurrection. Maybe maybe we can do that. But, you know, regardless. Well, Paul as well. We got to do Paul. But go ahead. All right. Regardless. Um, and so I don't think it's a red herring. Uh, as for this Deuteronomy uh, stuff, uh, you know, I mean, I'm given like the cliff No, I'm given like the cliff notes uh, uh, version of what a prophet is, even if. Even if the Quran or Prophet Muhammad says something different to specific laws, it doesn't. It doesn't matter, anyways. I'm saying uh, the Prophet Muhammad fulfills the the basic criteria. He doesn't need to fulfill every single criteria, right? He doesn't need to agree with every single biblical law in order to be a, a biblical prophet. I'm just given the general outline. So according to the general outline, Christians can't reject Prophet Muhammad because uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad fulfills the general outline. I'm not talking about specifics. You're going to specifics. I'm going into the general uh, specific uh, uh, stuff. The only thing you have against the prophet moment being a prophet according to uh, biblical criteria is probably the satanic verses, and I can refute that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my two cents here. Yeah, just again, we're going in circles again because uh, it's not general. I even took your general criteria and showed he fails even your general criteria. And I know you're tempted to talk about the satanic verses, but again, you want to divert because I want you to deal with my arguments as I'm dealing with your arguments. You brought up the name Yahweh. I didn't bring it up. You're attacking straw man uh, and bring it on red herring. Now you want to talk about Satan and satanic verses. I didn't bring it up, but I'm pretty Whoa. certain. Well, let me just Itishan, let me finish my point because you said no crossfire, which yeah. I don't mind. If you want to do crossfire, I can do that. You want to talk about the satanic verses, more than happy. I'm sure Dave would love to bring you on. We'll just do satanic verses and show it passes the criteria for authenticity. But again, I didn't bring up the satanic verses. I'm dealing with your criteria. I didn't even bring up criteria. I said, what is your criteria? According to your criteria, he fails even the general criteria as well as the specific. But since we're just repeating ourselves, maybe we can go to the other argument. Because I don't want to just keep repeating myself. Yeah, why don't uh, uh, enter Sham if you want to give your, uh, your 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 response to Sam there, and then we can we can go on to a different point. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, the satanic verse. I want to just talk real quick about that because the only reason why I brought that up is because I honestly believe that's the only argument Shimon has against uh, the prophet Moses. That's why he didn't bring it up. Okay, fine. But I'll just say the satanic verses is false because it's been condemned by. A lot of Muslim scholars, I know it's found in Ibn Issaq, al and even Saad al Tawri, but like I said before, uh, all those sources are uh, weak uh, anyways. So that's why I'm bringing, on, bringing it up, just to, just to refute it before it's even brought up. Uh, you know, but the proper moment fulfilled like the basic things because uh, uh, did God, did Muhammad uh, uh, affirm the worship of one God? Yes, just because he didn't follow uh, Deuteronomy 24 about you know marriage laws and the Quran chapter 2 verse uh, 220, 230 say something different that doesn't mean uh, you know he's a false prophet because he didn't go into specifics on on those issues did Prophet Muhammad do miracles yes uh, you know did Prophet Muhammad do prophecies yes the specifics don't matter the fact that he did it 
matter. You see, so there, there are uh, three things. And the Prophet Muhammad spoke positively about people like Moses, about people like, uh, uh, you know, Adam, Noah, and so all those prophets are uh, accepted in Islam. So Islam's not bringing anything new. It's bringing the final, it's bringing the final revelation. So I think uh, that's that's just my theological uh, theory. So, yeah, can yeah, I? But, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind uh, because you you guys uh, you kind of discussed whether miracles or fulfilled prophecies yeah, yeah. would show that someone's a prophet without actually yeah. without actually going into any fulfilled prophecies or. Um, or miracles, which Etishem did mention yesterday. I remember, I remember him mentioning that Muhammad uh, prophesied that there, are, you know, people would compete in building uh, tall buildings, and uh, I think he mentioned Muhammad splitting in the moon. I think you mentioned yeah, he uh, mentioned a few things. Um, but uh, Etishem, did you want to did you want to talk about any of those, and then Sam could respond? Or yeah, but one yeah. point before we go there, Etishem, yeah. because yeah. I want to address one thing. You said prophecy, right. but here's what you said. You said that Muhammad. Preach the worship of the one God. Okay, now Leviticus 26 verse 1 and I want you to address this Leviticus 26 verse 1 God condemns anyone who would take sacred stones <clears throat> and Venerate them according to your sound tradition, which is part of your umrah and your hajj Muhammad made it mandatory that if you're able to when you perform the pilgrimage the lesser or the greater pilgrimage to kiss the black stone and to smother it and weep upon it so here's my challenge to you at Tisham from the very uh, Deuteronomy and the Pentateuch you referred to. You saying, see, he preached the worship of the one God. Can you show me anywhere in the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch or Deuteronomy, where God says, part of my worship includes kissing a black stone, smothering it, weeping on it as an act of devotion to me. When Leviticus 26 1 says, anyone who does that is condemned to hell. So can you show me that in the Pentateuch to show that Muhammad complies with? the very criteria, the general criteria you appeal to. All right, I'm just writing my response. So, all right, uh, Leviticus, okay, so about this black stone uh, kissing and stuff like that, Muslims, Muslims, uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad kissed it to respect it or, or things like that. It, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean Muslims worship it. He kissed it to respect it. Not where even, even Umar ibn Khattab, I know you know that hadith, Umar ibn Khattab uh, said, I'm only kissing you because I saw the Prophet Muhammad kissing you. He kissed it to respect, or he he kissed it to uh, respect it, not not to worship it. Uh, uh, you know, it, it doesn't, and, uh, for, and another thing is most Muslims wouldn't even do that. It's not even a compulsory act to go to Kaaba and kiss the black stone. Uh, you know, we have what, uh, 1.6 billion Muslims or something like that. Most Muslims won't even go to Hajj, first of all. And uh, most Muslims wouldn't even do that. So that's not even a compulsory uh, act uh, act uh, uh, on us. Um, uh, you know, so you kiss to respect it, uh, not to worship it. Mm -hmm. You know, so Sam Shamoon, if you kiss your wife, does that mean you worship her? No, you're, well, just, you're, yeah. doing, it, you're just doing it to respect her, right? Uh, well, uh, well, I hope so, but um, uh, yeah. Yeah, let me address that. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells me to show affection to my wife, but condemns me to show affection to stones. So you're attacking strawman again and throwing God a red herring. So let me repeat my challenge again. I can show you in the Bible where God tells me to show love and devotion and affection to my wife because she's a living, breathing being. But the same Bible that tells me to do that condemns me for showing reverence to a stone that neither benefits nor harms that's inanimate, so I'm gonna try it again. You can say it's not worship, and you can say it's not compulsory, but your greatest example is Muhammad, and he's an example for you to follow. The man that you say is a prophet like Moses, so I'm gonna try it again. You can explain it away and say it's not worship, he's just showing it respect. I was clear, the true God of Moses did not allow the Israelites to take a stone and show it that kind of respect and veneration. So if Muhammad is a prophet like Moses, then that means he's going to worship God the way Moses did. So I'm gonna try it again. Can you show me where the God of Moses said, you can take a stone, <clears throat> a sacred stone, a, a stone of any kind, show it respect. It won't be worship, show it respect. And in doing that, you'll be honoring me because this is something that I endorse. This is something I condone. When Leviticus 26.1 condemns anyone who would show any type of respect to an inanimate stone like your prophet did. So that didn't address my, my objection and to correct you again. 
Whereas the Bible does say, show affection to living animate beings like my wife and children. It condemns showing such affection to an inanimate stone. Even the example of Umar proved my point. Even Umar didn't understand the logic. He went to kiss and he said, I know you're a stone that neither harms nor benefits. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah do it, I would not have done it. So he's baffled. I don't know why he did it, but hey, he's the prophet and I have to follow his example. But that example condemned Omar to hell. So I'm going to ask you again. You said Muhammad taught the worship of the, of the same true God that Moses commanded. But the God of Moses condemned venerating stones. Can you now respond to that instead of red herrings and straw men? Well, like I said, it's not a compulsory act on Muslims. It was just some random thing the Prophet Muhammad did. Like, we know the Prophet Muhammad didn't like eating lizards. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. It's not like, it's it's not a compulsory act, right? Islam is based on five pillars, none of which uh, talk about, you know, going and kissing the black stone. So it's just a random thing he did. It's, it doesn't, it, it's not, uh, it's not a compulsory. If it was a compulsory act, I would agree with you, right? If, if the Prophet Muhammad said you have to do it, uh, in order to stay a Muslim, uh, you know, uh, uh, then I would agree with you. But it's just a random thing he did, uh, uh, you know, that that has no bearing on us. Like we know the Prophet Muhammad didn't like like eating lizards. We know the Prophet Muhammad wore sandals. Uh, you know, we we don't have to do those things. It just it just it, he was just uh, uh, you know there were just things at that specific time at that specific place for specific reasons. So it's not a compulsory act. If it was a compulsory act then yes, I would agree with you, but it's not a compulsory act. So uh, uh, that's the issue. I mean, uh, you kiss your wife, so that does, does that mean you worship her? Uh, you know, so I mean, the logic doesn't follow. Uh, right. you know, but we, uh, we can move on to other things. Well, let so, me make a final yeah. point on this. Just one final day, because he said it's not compulsory. You said there are five compulsory acts. Now, Itisham, you and I both know. One of the five compulsory acts is Hajj, pilgrimage. You must, if you can afford it, at least once in your lifetime, make a pilgrimage to Mecca. You're supposed to run around it seven times and then run between Safa and Marwa seven times, throw stones at Wadi Mina and kiss the black stone. So part of one of your five compulsory acts is that you must either touch the stone or kiss the stone if you can. But if there's a large crowd, you can not at least try to symbolize that you're touching it. So... Even what you said, one of your five compulsory acts is pilgrimage. Part of the rites of pilgrimage is if you can, if the crowd is not too large, kiss the black stone and touch it, which is why Omar had to do it because his prophet did it. So no, it is compulsory. And you said, if it's compulsory, I'd agree with you. So that means now you agree with me, Muhammad is condemned as an idolater. Because you said, if it's compulsory, I agree with you. It is. So I want everyone to hear you say, because I have the references here, the hadith. The rites of pilgrimage, and one of the rites, you must kiss it if you are able to reach it. But I want it recorded. I want you to say, part of Hajj, which is compulsory, I am not required to kiss the black stone and touch it. If I'm able to, I can ignore it. Do you want to say that on record? Because I want other Muslims to hear that. All right, so David, can I respond? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, you can, and after that, we'll uh, we'll have to move on. Yeah, it'll be a final point. Go ahead, then. Yeah. All right, so... Like I said, uh, most Muslims wouldn't even do that in Hajj, right? Uh, 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 most Muslims wouldn't even do that. I know Muslims. I personally know Muslims who went to Saudi Arabia, went to Hajj, and they didn't even they skipped over that part. They don't even they didn't even do that part. And uh, and to get like you know 1.6 billion Muslims to Saudi Arabia to do Hajj is impossible, right? It's not a compulsory act. The Prophet Muhammad didn't care about it. It was just some random thing he did. So it's not a compulsory act in any way. I would agree with you 100% if the Prophet Muhammad said you have to do it. But I, I, Muslims have told, I haven't been to Hajj, but Muslims have told me personally, devoted Muslims who went to Saudi Arabia, went to Hajj, they said they didn't even do it. They didn't even rant, they didn't even like attempt to touch it. That shows how how, uh, how unnecessary it is, how uh, it's not even recommended, it's not even a general recommendation. So what the Prophet Muhammad did, 1400 years ago doesn't apply to uh, uh, you know today's standards anyway so it's just it, this is just a red herring honestly uh, you know I think it's a red herring it doesn't mean it, it doesn't prove Muhammad's not a biblical prophet according to the criteria again this is just a big big red herring uh, 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 you know Prophet Muhammad uh, fulfilled the general uh, criteria uh, Sam Shamoon hasn't uh, hasn't done a satisfactory answer to that so can we move on David or you want to add your two cents? Oh no! Uh, yeah, move on. Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh? So, 
Uh, on the issue of well, we could we can move on to some of your some of your other points, or if you wanted to uh, talk about you, you you said Muhammad performed miracles, and you gave uh, a couple of examples yesterday, and you said that Muhammad fulfilled prophecies. If you want to give a, uh, you, you gave a couple of examples. If you uh, um, you want to, you want to talk about one of those one of those issues. So uh, if, yeah, so so Whatever if you. you want. So if you now, now uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, uh, Sam and I. I think I, I think Sam I think Sam still believes this. I, I I know I do. We believe that according to the Quran, Muhammad actually didn't perform miracles except the Quran. Exactly. So that that's our position. So uh, if you wanted to make uh, make a case for why we should actually believe that Muhammad did perform miracles that would be similar to the miracles of a of a biblical prophet um you you can you could go ahead and, and share share any ex, share your best examples with uh with uh with the viewers i'm sorry can you repeat i was i was writing my response to the quran not doing not saying about miracles. Can you oh yeah yeah ba ba basically uh, basically uh our position is that we don't believe that muhammad performed miracles we believe that those were Sort of later inventions, and that the Quran actually denies that Muhammad could perform miracles. So, if you wanted to, but you're you're appealing to Muhammad's miracles to show that he actually meets the biblical criteria uh, of a prophet. So, if, if we were assuming that miracles would would give someone a good case that he's that he's a prophet, what miracles? What miracles do you believe that Muhammad performed apart from apart from the Quran? Uh, oh yeah. Um, okay. So the mir so the Quran is saying the Prophet Muhammad didn't do miracles. That's actually false. The Prophet Muhammad or the Quran is denying specific miracles to the Meccans. You know why? Because the Meccans were asking for uh, miracles, and even if the Prophet Muhammad did those miracles, the Meccans still wouldn't believe. Like I believe in the New Testament, uh, Sam, you can you you uh, you can you could probably have the references where it says John the Baptist didn't do miracles. Yep. Or Jesus says uh, in, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of Matthew, no sign shall be given to you except, you know, the sign of Jonah, uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter uh, 12. I, I don't know the references, but it's in there, the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Matthew. You can look up, I apologize, uh, you can look up the references. Matthew 16, yes, Matthew 16. Yeah, exactly. so even John the Baptist, and he, John the Baptist didn't do miracles, and the Jews were asking, Jesus to do a miracle, and he said, "No signs will be given to you." He was frustrated with the uh, Jews too. So the Quran is basically uh, the Quran is not saying the Prophet Muhammad can never do miracles. That's not what he's saying. The Quran is not saying Prophet Muhammad's only a, war a warner. He, he can he can't do miracles. The Quran is denying specific miracles to the Meccans because even if Prophet Muhammad did those miracles, they still they still wouldn't believe. So uh, so that's the uh, that's the argument. The Quran is not is not denying that the Prophet Muhammad can't do miracles. Uh, so as for specific miracles, uh, well, I'll just give two to, to save time. Uh, the Quran, chapter 54, uh, and Tafsir ibn Kathir, ibn, Tafsir ibn Abbas, which is earlier than Tafsir ibn Kathir, and things like that. According to uh, Quran, chapter 54, Prophet Muhammad split the moon in half, and he uh, brought it back. Now, you might say if the moon was split in half, how come there's no records of it? Or, you know, that's, uh, 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 you know, that that's impossible or whatever. Well, uh, Christian Jews, Christians, and Muslims believe in the supernatural. They believe in the supernatural realm. So why can't God split the moon in half and put it back immediately? And the second reason why it's not recorded is because, you know, it was during the night. So I don't think people uh, 1,400 years ago were just looking at the sky, uh, you know, with telescopes and satellites and things like that. So that's why I think it was a miss. So why can't God uh, split the moon in half and put it back the way it, uh, the way it was? Um, you know, uh, and keep in mind, Christians and Muslims believe in the supernatural realm. So in a world where God exists, these things are possible. The second miracle Prophet Muhammad did was he healed people, according to uh, uh, Ibn Kathir's uh, biography. Uh, Prophet Muhammad increased Abu Huraira's uh, memory in Sayyid Bukhari and Sayyid Muslim. Prophet Muhammad uh, had water coming out of his hands in Sayyid Bukhari and uh, Sayyid Muslim and uh, things, like, uh, uh, things like that. And uh, Prophet Muhammad was able to multiply food uh, in Sayyid Muslim. So according to our Muslim, most authentic sources, Prophet Muhammad uh, did uh, miracles and uh, uh, things like that. And uh, another thing about this, William Lane Craig, uh, I remember I was watching a debate with William Lane Craig a little bit ago, and he, he even made that said. He said that Prophet Muhammad didn't do miracles according to the 
earliest biography of the Prophet Muhammad. Well, according to according to this book, even though I don't think this is reliable, this book's reliable. Prophet Muhammad did miracles according to uh, uh, this book too. Uh, so even that claim is uh, false. So that's just my uh, two cents here. All right. All right. So Ready Sam, Sam, yeah, Sam. There are basically two issues: whether uh, whether uh, the Quran is or is not uh, claiming that Muhammad uh, couldn't perform miracles, and then specific examples from uh, both the Quran and from uh, yes. the Sira and Hadith. Yeah. Let me address it. Number one, when you said that John the Baptist didn't do any miracles, remember that's not our criterion. I even stated. I want everyone to hear. I actually made it clear that according to Deuteronomy 13, fulfilled prophecy and miracles are no proof that a person is a true prophet sent by God. So no one made an argument that John the Baptist is a true prophet or a false prophet because of miracles or lack thereof. So when you give me a criterion, see Muhammad is a true prophet, he did miracles, and say, well see, John didn't do miracles and he's still a true prophet. As far as I'm concerned, and David's concerned, that's not the argument that we're making for the validity of John the Baptist. That's first of all. So that's not our criterion, that's yours. Secondly, even though Jesus said no sign will be given to this adulterous generation except the sign of Jonah, even then he's saying they're going to receive a sign. You, I mean, read it, Matthew 16, verse 1 or 2. He, and he said that after giving them plenty of signs, he had already done dozens of miracles. The disciples did dozens of miracles in the name of Jesus. He didn't say no sign will be given. He goes, in spite of all the signs I've given you, you're going to get one final sign, one more, no other sign but this, the sign of Jonah. And then he explains what it means. So it's ironic you're appealing to Jesus, who did dozens of miracles in front of eyewitnesses, even hostile witnesses. So did his disciples. And even that comment assumes he will do a miracle. No sign shall be given except, so he didn't say no sign altogether, end of story, period. No sign except this final sign will be over for you. So that's Jesus saying, I've given you enough signs, you still reject, and I'm going to give you a final one and game over. But then when you say that the Quran, this is what you said, you said the Quran is denying specific miracles that the unbelievers asked of Muhammad. That is true for some of the verses, but that's not true for all of the verses. So I'm going to say you're again mistaken because the Quran speaks in generalities. They're asking, why hasn't he done any sign, period, and they don't qualify it. For example, chapter 17, verse 59. I'm going to give you, and then I'm going to read Muhammad Asad. But you may reject him and say, well, he's liberal. Well, that's fine. You don't have to accept him, just like I don't accept any scholar you cite. But the problem is, the evidence is on the side of Muhammad Assad because he's faithful to the Quran, whereas later tradition is trying to make Muhammad into a superman comparable to Jesus. Little do they realize that's another weapon in the hands of unbelievers to show that the Hadiths contradict the Quran. They're embellished and cannot be trusted in those areas. So let me just read a couple of verses for you. Chapter 17, verse 59. Chapter 17, verse 59. Not prevented us, nothing prevented us from sending the signs but that the ancients cried lies to them. We brought Thamud the she-camel, visible, but they did her wrong, and we do not send the signs except to frighten. Now notice, it didn't say, we didn't send the specific signs, yes. We didn't send signs generally. We didn't send signs generally. We didn't send any sign, period. Not just the specific ones you asked. And here's the excuse, because they rejected them uh, uh, before, so you're gonna reject them too. Well, I can say the same thing. Itisham, I'm a prophet. And I won't give you a miracle because what's the point? Even if I did a miracle to prove I'm a prophet, you'll reject it. So therefore, I won't do a miracle. It's a waste of time. But still, believe me, I'm a prophet. That's a very terrible, lame excuse on the part of Muhammad. Now, chapter 13, verse 27. Here you go. The unbelievers say, why has a sign not been Wait, sent can you, down? Can you repeat that reference? I'm sorry. Can you repeat chapter that? Chapter 13, verse 27. Okay. Chapter 13, verse 27. Why... The unbelievers say, why has a sign not been sent down upon him from his Lord? Didn't say a specific sign. A general sign. How come no sign from your Lord? They didn't say this specific sign. So you're taking select verses where they did ask for specific signs and ignoring the plethora of references where they're asking for a sign in general. Just any sign. Period. And what's the response? Doesn't say, we already sent you plenty of signs. What are you talking about? No, here's the response. The unbelievers say, why has a sign not been sent down upon him from his Lord? Say, God leads astray whomever, whomsoever he wills, and he guides to him all who are penitent. Now, let me read Muhammad Asad, because I have a question about the splitting of the moon, because you mentioned 54 verse 5. Here's what Muhammad Asad says, 
Page 427. This highly elliptic <clears throat> sentence has a fundamental bearing on the pur uh, purpose of the Quran as a whole. In many places, the Quran stresses the fact that the Prophet Muhammad, despite his being the last and greatest of God's apostles, was not empowered to perform mir miracles similar to those which the earlier prophets are said to have reinforced their verbal messages. His only miracle, let me repeat, his only miracle was and is the Quran itself. A message perfect in its lucidity and ethical comprehensiveness, destined for all times and all stages of human development, addressed not merely to the feelings, but also to the minds of men, open to everyone, whatever his race or social environment, and bound to remain unchanged forever. So Muhammad Assad, who converted to Islam, who translated the Quran from Arabic English, so he was a scholar, says, the repeated message of the Quran, he did know miracles, especially like those of the prophets before him, the only miracle is the Quran, which means these hadiths are contradicting the Quran. And if you're a good Muslim, anytime a hadith contradicts the Quran, the hadith go, not the Quran. So now, can you open up chapter 54, verse 1? Because you mentioned it, and this was part of your response. And I have more okay. verses. But can, you to, yeah, but can you go to chapter 54, part of your response? Show me in that passage where it says, that the moon was split because of Muhammad being asked to show a sign. When it says the hour has come, it's talking about the day of judgment. Can you read that for us? Or you want me to read it? But I want you to read it. Oh, no, 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 no. Can I go, can I, David? Can I go? Yeah, it's your, yeah, it's your turn. He handed it over to you. He, he asked you to read. He asked you to read uh, the beginning of Surah 54 can I go? And, and to show where it said something about Muhammad. But in addition to that, it's your time now. You can respond to anything uh, anything he said. Oh, hang on. Etashem, you broke up there. Etashem is frozen. Uh, Etashem, can you hear me? Sometimes, sometimes it only. Sometimes the uh, there are uh, there are fluctuations in the internet. They only last uh, uh, you know thirty seconds or a minute or something like that, and then uh, and then it works out again. So um, yeah, we'll go ahead and wait. Yeah, I, I can hear you. I okay. can't see. You. I can hear you. Okay, your your voice is a little bro breaking up, and you're you're not moving, so you're kind of frozen on the screen. But go ahead, go ahead and try talking, and we'll see if we can hear you. Hello. Uh, yeah, you're you're you're. Yeah, you're you're breaking up. We'll just give it a, a minute. Um, we'll just give it a minute or so. Um. I want to say I want to say I want to let Sam keep Sam keep talking until your internet uh, internet catches up, which which should should. Should be yeah, the case. Yeah, you want me to seconds. just read the verse then, because he doesn't want. I'll read it, and then he can respond. Yeah, Sam, you go go ahead and read the the verse, and then hopefully, uh, hopefully, at the Shams uh, internet okay. connection uh, catches up here in a second. All right, here it goes. Fifty four verse one, and I'll read two. The hour drew nigh, and the moon was rent in twain. Notice the hour drew nigh, and the moon was rent in twain. And if they behold the portent, they turn away and say, "Prolonged illusion." The hour now. Here's what Yusuf Ali was, is going to say about this passage, okay? Here's what Yusuf Ali says about this passage. Let me see if I can find it. All right. Uh, Whoops. Hang on, Sam. He's calling you. What? You yeah. want to pick up? Can you see me? We'll wait. Yeah, I see you, but um, is that a, di is that a different uh, internet? What is that? Is that your phone? No, that's my phone, yeah. Um, yeah, let me call. I will have to call both of you back. Um, and just and just answer it on your phone. All right. So I'm gonna have to hang up real quick, and then I'll call you back. Or you go ahead and yeah, let me see. All right. All right, Etisham, I think you have to hang up on your computer, and then uh, and then after that, call me back on your phone. Just give him a second, Sam. Or, or, or you can finish sure. your point, Sam. But just uh, okay. Uh, I explained. Yeah, I, I explained yesterday. Uh, I'm fine at using Skype for just for for talking to someone until um, until something goes wrong or we're trying to switch people in a group chat and then I run into some problems here. Let's okay. See. Now, if you want me, yeah. All right. Now, all right. Now we have you on again. All right, Etisham, I have to uh, 
I have to hang up on you here. When when you get a call back, pick it up on your phone because I have to kind of call both of you at the same time. All right. All right. There you go. Let's. Yeah, trying to figure right. out how to call Etisham here. Okay. Uh, see when he. Hmm. Not sure how to do this when. Okay. Well, we can't. We oh, can't here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, there we go. You got him. All right. Can we hear? Can we uh, get a sound check from you at the sham? All right. All right. Hello, hello. Hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Time is yours now. Oh, mine or Sam's? Your, your time. Your time. Sam talked oh, for like okay. an hour. Hmm. All right. So regarding Mark uh, chapter eight, verse thirteen through uh, uh, through uh, uh, Mark chapter eight, verse uh, eleven through thirteen, uh, Jesus. Uh, hang on one second. Here. All right. Jesus says uh, uh, the Pharisees came and began to question Jesus to test him. They asked for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply and said, why does this generation ask for a miraculous sign? I tell you the truth. No sign have been given to it. So according to the commentary, and I'll, I'll get to your verses real quick. Uh, after this, It says they are looking. They're not looking simply for an earthly miracle, but a dramatic sign from heaven some, uh, for something uh, for Elijah's fire in heaven. Uh, so even the, the the people of Jesus' day would persist in asking Jesus for a miracle, even after he performed several miracles, such as raising the world back to life, going blind, and uh, things like that. As for the Quran, chapter 17, verse uh, 79, uh, again, this refers to sending the signs the Quraysh specifically asked for, just as just how the Talmud specifically asked for the sheep camel, uh, Tafsir al qurtubi God did not send it to them. Uh, so Tafsir, of to be predates your Muhammad Assad stuff. God did not send it to them as a mercy because God knows that if he did send the signs, they would still disbelieve. As for, uh, uh, what else did he bring up? Uh, as for the Quran, chapter 54, what did you say, Sam? What did you say about I can hear you. 50, no, I said 54, verse 1. I said I was going to read you. Savali was going to read us that. Uh, where does it say that this is something Muhammad did when it says the hour has drawn nigh. What hour? Well, like I said, according to, can you see me? Uh, no, you, you disappeared, ahead? but we can hear you. Go ahead, yes. All right. Uh, uh, hang on one second, let me, let me try to get audio. Let me try to get video back. Right. Even if you can, we can hear you perfectly. Oh, you can you hear me? Yes, All right. there you go. Uh, all right, so, uh, the Quran, chapter 54, it's talking about the splitting of the moon because we, uh, 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 what, what, uh, according to Tafsir ibn Kathir, Tafsir ibn Abbas, the, uh, the Hadith literature, Sayyid Bukhari, Sayyid Muslim, etc., etc., we believe that, uh, the Prophet Muhammad split the moon because the, of, of the Quran, chapter 54. So the context of the Quran, 54, is not talking about the end of the world, the day of judgment day. It's talking about that specific time Prophet Muhammad split the moon and, uh, brought it. Uh, brought it uh, back according to the earliest uh, Muslim literature. So that's the correct context of it. And the Quran, did, I mean, uh, Hadith did not come 200 years later. It uh, it was written uh, during the times of the companions and things like that. So it's talking about that specific time. It's not talking about the Day of Judgment times. Okay. Can I address them now? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, number one, Matthew 16, Jesus does say, no sign shall be given to it. But if you go to Matthew 12, 37, 41, he says... What? No sign shall be given except the sign of Jonah. Is he still there? Is he still there, Dave, or do you leave? Uh, yeah, I think someone's calling him. Okay, yeah. Are you listening at the chat? Yeah. Oh, okay, I think yeah. I... Yeah. I can't hear you, man. You're good. Again, this happens. This happens. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, can can you hear me? You got to hang up on that uh, Skype guy who's calling you. Is he there? Can you hear me? Oh, looks like we lost at the sham. No. Hang on. All right. Okay. Let me see. Okay, hold on. That's weird, guys. What was that? Not me. I'm just whistling.
Um, All right, guys. Hey, guys, this is technology. It's the best we can do. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, we see you. Yeah. Are you back? Yeah. Okay, now here's my response again, hopefully by the grace of Jesus Christ. Matthew 16, verse 1 and 2, that's when he says, No sign shall be given to this wicked, adulterous generation. But if you go back to Matthew 12, 37 and 41, he says, No sign shall be given this adulterous generation except the sign of Jonah. He had already done dozens of signs, and he said they will be given a sign, and the final sign will be his resurrection. So Jesus already gave ample signs and proofs to show them they have no excuse for rejecting him, which is unlike what we find in the case of Muhammad. Secondly, it's not a matter of proximity, because Muhammad Assad is much later in time, and therefore Qurtubi is earlier, and then somehow that means that Qurtubi is more reliable, because it is sham. You're contradicting yourself, because Ibn Ashaq, who's even closer to the time of Muhammad than Qurtubi, says things about Muhammad that you reject. For example, you said about the satanic verses, and I want everyone to hear what you said. I know Ibn Ashaq mentions the satanic verses. I know Tabari does, but they are weak. So now it's like you want to have your cake and eat it too. You want to go with Qurtubi when it comes to miracles and reject Assad because Qurtubi is closer. And yet Ibn Ashaq, who's even closer to that Muhammad, you still question, you still doubt, and you reject the satanic verses, even though it comes from Ibn Ashaq, who's way earlier than Qurtubi. So what method are you using to determine historicity? It seems like your method is, if it suits my purpose, I'll quote it. If it refutes my purpose and my aim and exposes Muhammad as a pro false prophet, no matter how close, I'll reject it. You can't have your cake and eat it to it, Tisham. Stick with a method, be consistent so we can apply it. But I want everyone to hear this. I want everyone to hear it. Qurtubi, who's closer than Assad, says Muhammad did miracles, Assad is later. Well, Ibn Ishaq is even closer than Qurtubi, and so is Tabari, and both of them affirm your prophet recited satanic verses inspired by Satan to praise gods and goddesses. But you're going to say they're weak, they're fabricated, they're inauthentic, so you really don't, don't care about proximity. You don't really care how close the source is, because if a source is damning, no matter how close is it, you're going to reject it. So let's come back to now Muhammad Assad. It's not that Muhammad Assad is later. Muhammad is using the Quran to determine what later traditions say. So Muhammad Assad, unlike Qurtubi, is faithful to the Quran because the Quran repeatedly says no miracles in general, not simply rejecting specific miracles. So Assad is right because he's, he's, he's going with the Quran. Qurtubi, though earlier than Assad, is wrong because he's contradicting the Quran. Do you see how it works? Assad is not that naive. He wasn't that stupid because he's since deceased. He realizes if the Quran says something black and white, I don't care what other sources say, how closer they are to the Quran. They're contradicting the Quran. They can't be right unless the Quran is wrong. So you see the method I'm using? I'm using the method of Muhammad Assad. If the Quran says black and white, no miracles, you can give me Ibn Ashaq and Tabari and Qurtubi. You can give them all saying he did miracles. The Quran trumps them unless you want to say that the son of Muhammad trumps the Quran, if that is the son of Muhammad. Finally, it is the future in chapter 54, verse 1. But before I get to that, let me read another passage. This passage proves he couldn't do miracles. And at the Sham, I hope you understand the argument. Because if you show me he did miracles, the Quran is a lie. Stop being a Muslim. Because I want to read this. Chapter 29, verses 48 to 51. Chapter 29, verses 48 to 51. I want you to read what the Quran says, why there can't be miracles except the Quran. The Quran says there can't be any miracle. Specific can't be. Hear why. Not before this didst thou recite any book. Before this, you didn't recite a book or inscribe it with your hand. For then those who followed falsehood would have doubted. No, rather it is signs, meaning the Quran is signs, clear signs. In the breast of those who have been given knowledge, meaning those who recite it. And none deny our signs, but evildoers. Now watch this, Tisham. They say, why have signs not been sent down upon him from his Lord? Notice again, it's general, Tisham. You keep going to the verses that refer to specific miracles they ask. Here it's general. Why not si signs in general? Any sign given to him. Muhammad didn't respond the way you would like him to respond. He didn't say, many signs are already given. You still don't believe. Here's the answer. Say, the signs are only with Allah, and I'm only a plain warner. What? Is this not sufficient for them, that we have sent down upon you the book that is recited to them? 
Surely in it is a mercy and a reminder to a people who believe. So notice Muhammad's response, which is not your response, not Qurtubi's response, not Tabari's response. Why aren't there any signs given to you? Now, didn't ask for specific, so don't make it specific, it's general. And he says, well, the signs are with my Lord, my God, but I'm only a plain warner. And besides, this Quran is a sufficient miracle. Itisham, now you're in a dilemma. If you show me another miracle to confirm the Quran, you prove Muhammad was wrong. The Quran is not sufficient. It's insufficient, so it needs other miracles to back it up. But if it needs other miracles, then the Quran lied right here. So you can't have your cake and eat it too. Before I go to what Assad says about 54 verse 1, deal with this passage that says, this Quran is the sufficient miracle. doesn't need anything. You're saying, no, he did other miracles, which means the Quran is not sufficient, so it lied when it said it is. You're in a dilemma. Now please respond to that. All right. Uh, what was the uh, what was the verses again, uh, Sam? Uh, twenty nine verses forty eight to fifty one, but specifically verse fifty one. So twenty nine verses forty eight to fifty one, but pay attention specifically to fifty one, which says, "No signs. I'm just the warner. This is sufficient. You bring other miracles. That means a crown light. It's not sufficient because it needs other miracles." What does it mean to devote your life to the truth? All right. One second. We're hearing something in the background. Yeah, it sounds like a video popped up or something like that. Yeah, I'm trying to. Damn it! Sorry, I'm trying to get my laptop connected back. All right, whatever. I'll just go with that. Yeah, I'll we're good. We only have about. Yeah, we only have about ten more minutes anyway. All right. All right so I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna wrap this. I'm just gonna answer this. I'm gonna wrap up mm -hmm. uh, the thing. Uh, one second. I'm gonna refute Sam's point, and I'm just gonna get to the conclusion. Sound sound good, David? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Sure. All right, uh, chapter, Quran chapter 29, verse 48 through 51. 51. All right. All right, so about the technical difficulties, I'm sorry, I was using my laptop that I got, I had to switch to my phone. I'm sorry for inter any interruptions. I don't know what's going on with my, with my internet. That's, uh, that's, that's, yeah. that's totally normal. Uh, I've had probably half the, probably half the people I have on here uh, live uh, experience uh, internet, internet connection problems at some point. All right, one second. <coughs> All right, so uh, yeah, I had I had the verse that Sam was bringing up, but I can I can I can actually I can actually put those up on the screen. Do you have a Do you have a translation that you prefer? Uh, Yusuf Ali. Okay. No, I had the commentary on the internet to specifically address Sam, but my internet, my God. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, do you just want right. to? Yeah. It's working. All right. It's working. Never mind. Never mind. It's working. All right. Uh, I don't know what that. I don't know what's going on with. I think it's the weather, or mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's. I don't know what's going on with the. No, I, I do. I do. Internet fluctuates based on how many people are using it. So if a bunch of people all of a sudden oh. decide to watch Netflix, then then the your the the uh, yeah your internet function drops because everyone in an area is using it. All right, so my okay, my internet's working good. So just give me one minute to, to access the commentaries to refute Shamoon. Yeah. Then I'll I'll move to I'll move to conclusions, and then we'll uh, we'll part we'll, we'll part ways. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, uh, I'll just address a couple of quick uh, questions real quick okay, while, while you're doing that. Um, so yeah. Ahmed uh, Ahmed Hassem, the copywriter, uh, I think he's a Muslim, said, how can I join the debate on Skype? So apparently uh, he, he wanted to jump right in. Uh, Ahmed, if you go to my uh, YouTube channel page, if you go to Act 17 Apologetics on YouTube, and you go to the About section, I think you have to be on a browser. I don't think it works on phone. So you have to be at like a desktop or laptop or something like that. But if you go there... And you you can click on my email address. Send me an email saying you wanna you wanna uh, you wanna join us for a discussion and that you want to talk about Muhammad and uh, we can we can work that out. And we had a, uh, we have a bunch of messages from people who are um, saying that they want specific people on there. Guys, that's not on us. We're 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 inviting everyone. the The floor is open to anyone. So um, Arab Khan Arab Khan says. Right. 
Arab, tell Shabir Ali come. Yeah, this Arab, week. Arab, Arab Khan says you guys should let Ali Dawa come. Ali Dawa's welcome. Um, Katie Miller Definitely. says we want to see uh, want to see Farid response. Farid response is welcome, guys. So don't don't tell us who you want on here. You go tell you, if there's someone you want to see on here. You go to that person and says uh, and say hey. They, they say you're welcome over on that channel. So tell them to contact us and we're, we're happy to set it up again. Anyone in the world, we're happy to have this, uh, this discussion. All right. At the show, you all set. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to be refuting. I'm going to be refuting Sam Shamoon's point and then I'll move to conclusions and then Sam and David, if you want to say something final, you can do that too. And then, uh, uh, try to get some other Muslim on because this will be my last night here. I don't want to hog the spotlight. Like I said, so, uh, the Quran, you so Sam, you brought up the Quran, chapter twenty nine, verse forty eight to fifty one, mm-hmm. right? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. So uh, basically, uh, again, this is uh, th- just because the Quran was not enough. This Quranic verse was talking about the Quraysh. It does not mean the Quran that the Quran itself is uh, sufficient enough to be a sign. So the, the Quran is saying uh, uh, this book, indeed, the Quran is a sign for the objective truth seeker. Uh, the, however, so the, this Quranic verse is talking about the Quraysh. The Quraysh were too stubborn to seek the truth, and that and that is why God sent down other signs. Uh, now, just because uh, just because the Quraysh were too stubborn, uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't uh, imply that uh, the Quran is saying no, no miracle will be uh, shown to them. Again, the uh, again the splitting of the moon was shown to them, and they just they just said it's magic. Uh, you know, as for the Quran, chapter fifty one. Uh, well, this is talking about a different situation. It's not talking about the Quraysh that's uh, referenced to in the Quran, chapter uh, uh, fifty. Um, uh, you know, as for the Quran, uh, chapter 51, this was sent down because there were a group of people from the companions of the Prophet Muhammad who copied some things from the books of the Jews and then used to read it. Then the Quran, chapter 51, came down rebuking them, saying that the Quran is enough for their salvation. Even the Prophet Muhammad said if Moses was alive today, he would follow him. And this is found in Tafsir al Dabari, in Tafsir al Qurtubi, and Tafsir al Dabari is uh, uh, early. Now, some might argue the Quran, chapter 51, is talking about a different group of people than the ones in uh, 50. Uh, however, I don't think so. Uh, notice the evildoers say in that verse, uh, why have signs not been sent down upon him from his Lord? The response to them is the signs are only with God, and I'm only a plain warner. So the response is to the evildoers. Uh, uh, so the response to the evildoers ends right there. So the Quran chapter 51 is talking about a different group of people. Uh, 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 you know, So it's not, the Quran is not saying Prophet Muhammad can never do signs. That's not what it's saying. It's just denying specific signs to specific people. But it's not saying Prophet Muhammad, nowhere in the Quran does it say Prophet Muhammad can't do uh, any kind of uh, miracle. So I'm just going to jump to conclusions uh, because, uh, you know, I think uh, I think it's time hey, to wrap hey, up right there. Hey, 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 yeah. Etoshem, uh, why don't we let, yeah. why don't we let Sam give his conclusion first? That way we can give you the last word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me okay. Uh, let me do it. Okay. Let me Sam, up. Sam, try Sam, try to keep it uh one to one to yeah. two minutes range. Okay. Um good. Yeah, let me do this. Yeah. First of all, just to make it part of my wrap up. Uh when he said, Well, it's just the Quraysh and that's who Muhammad is addressing. Well, who do you expect him to address? Who do you expect to be objecting to Muhammad? The Russians? Do you expect it to be Mexicans? It's obviously to the group he's sent to. And the group he's sent to are the Quraysh. And it's the Quraysh saying why aren't signs sent down to him from his Lord? They're not asking for a specific sign here. Other places they did, specific sign. But here now they're saying, why not signs generally? Where are the signs? None are given. And Muhammad's response is, the signs are with Allah. I'm only a plain warner. And besides, this is a sufficient sign. He said that the Quran is not saying it's a sufficient sign. Yes, it is. What? Is it not sufficient for them? I don't know how much plainer the Quran can be. The, the Quraysh that Muhammad was sent to didn't just ask for specific signs. They asked for any sign. Just a sign. Any sign. Muhammad's response is, no signs given. He could have said, I've already given you plenty of signs. Where does the Quran say, Muhammad said, I've already shown you plenty of signs. He repeatedly says, no signs. They're with my Lord. Besides, you'd reject them. And this Quran is sufficient. So contrary to what Itachan is saying, Muhammad is saying, I have no miracles, specifically or generally, because the Quran is sufficient. Anything beyond the Quran means the Quran is not sufficient, so it turns out to be a lie and a fraud if he did more miracles. So I wrap it up. All right, Etesham, and uh, you have your final thoughts here on anything from tonight or or last night. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we just tipped the, uh, we just touched the tip of the iceberg. Obviously, is Muhammad a prophet or 
uh, why Muslims believe is a pro- believe Muhammad is a prophet is a is a huge topic, right? It's impossible to cover everything in one like time debate. I think David and Sam would agree that is Muhammad a prophet is a big topic, and you know you would have to like narrow it down specifically. So this is just my two cents. I'm just. I'm, I'm just grateful I had a chance to talk about these things, uh, uh, right? So, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that. So I'm just going to wrap up my entire two-night discussion with you two uh, real quick. So the Quran does not say the Prophet Muhammad uh, didn't perform miracles. I'm going to do a YouTube video on it because I can't get to it right now because I need to I need to wrap up. I'm pretty sure Sam and David are sick of having me, so I need to, I need to get out of here. So basically, uh, the Prophet Muhammad... Like, what more do you honestly want from a prophet? The prophet woman did miracles. He did prophecy. He called people to worship one God. Uh, then what's your standard for judging a, a prophet? Like, it, it doesn't get any better than that. Right. I mean, what more what more do you want? If you're if you're saying that, well, prophet Muhammad contradicted the New Testament, that's a whole different debate, whether Jesus claimed God, whether he died by crucifixion, whether he was resurrected and whether the disciples believe that or uh, not. That's a whole other topic. So I think uh, this is just my general cliff note version of uh, why the prophet Muhammad is a prophet. Uh, and uh, like I said uh, last night, uh, Prophet Muhammad did say the Jews and Christians have corrupted their scriptures. The Quran does say the Bible is corrupt, and I've shown from conservative scholars themselves. Uh, you know, I was going to bring up Jeremiah 8.8 right now, but because of time, I can't really get it. Maybe I'll make another video on that and uh, things like that, where I read other other commentaries, other other. Christian commentators saying that, yeah, Jeremiah 8.8 is talking about biblical corruption. It's talking about the corruption of the Torah and uh, the five books of Moses and things like that. So I wish we could, I wish we had, I had more time, but, uh, you know, I, I think I've overstayed my welcome. So uh, conclusions here, right? I believe Muhammad is a prophet. I believe he fulfilled the biblical criteria for uh, being a uh, well, prophet. So I invite all of you who are objective truth seekers to uh, you know, at least consider the prophethood of Muhammad. You might have your reasons for rejecting him, but uh, I would just ask that you that you honestly consider uh, him. So, in conclusions, um, I just want to say thank you to Sam Shamoon and David Wood for uh, giving me an opportunity. I know I've insulted David Wood in the past. He gave me a platform, even though I didn't deserve it. So, thank you, David. You're honestly a good Christian believer. You're a man who's uh, seeking redemption. I uh, I like that about you. So, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, I think that's a good trade. So, by the way, Tisham, yeah. that was the yeah. most obviously false thing you said tonight about David Wood. But I'll let you sl- I'll let you slide. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, everyone. Thanks to uh, thanks for everyone for joining us and watching this night and last night. Uh, thanks to uh, Sam and Etisham for joining us again. The links to both their channels are in the description box if you want to if you want to follow their channels. And uh, again, we'll be having these discussions all week long. So anyone who wants to contact us, uh, please do so. I've, I I have been contacted by a couple of Muslims. We still have to to you know check out and see if the uh, if the time and so on work out. But uh, we'll be on one way or another tomorrow night eight eight o'clock p.m. Eastern uh, time. Me, me, Lord willing. Let me just leave with this before you hang up. Yesterday, Etisham brought in 2,700 people. Today it was about 1,300, but I want to see 3,000 tomorrow, God willing. Show up! God bless yep. you. All right, guys. All right, thanks for having me. Take care, Etisham. Catch y'all later. Yeah, you too.